okay guys what's happening Martin Martin's back again you know what we are so let's get into it so guys trying to touch base with respect of this particular article I came across um, which seems to have been uh, released in March 2020 and this is by a Adrian Clark and this is GQ magazine many people know it obviously it's all around the world and this is the UK edition as you can see um, and it's in the best aftershave and fringe this is the GQ guide which is fine no issue with that just quickly having a quick look now um, and obviously there's a bit of a rundown in respect of the difference between the aftershave and all the toilet um, um, or the parfum which is pretty useful for people who don't know so I'm going to take the view straight away that this is a um, it's obviously it's, it's a magazine it's not necessarily for anyone who's a particularly in-depth expert you know I'm not saying I am myself but in respect of obviously what it is it's more for general public mass appealing type of fragrances um, and as you'll see I've got some thoughts on what comes out within the top 10 it goes beyond that but let's just focus on the top 10 so at least it gives you an idea for those that want to know about the basics of some um, you know perfume how could I say composition between aftershaves or the toilet and um, or the parfum you've got some information there obviously it all comes down to the oils and what's been used concentration of oils and you've got properties of a fragrance so different elements different ingredients can go into making a fragrance and you'll find over time and one thing I'm noticing um, it's quite useful is that you'll notice that there's a particular type of base fragrance that you'll often see probably amber some form of woodsy notes maybe a sandalwood note or cedarwood note and equally in the midst you may have slightly more depending on the type of fragrance it can range from maybe patchouli for instance depending on where you know the season and obviously where the fragrance itself is trying to go in respect of the expression of the fragrance but just moving into it now this is number one and it says it's Creed Aventus Cologne. Now I've done my review of this one. I'm not particularly a fan. Um, I'm not sure why that's number one. And um, because the thing actually says best men's after shaving fringes is the GQ guide. So if that's the best number one, again, this is the Cologne version. Um, I don't necessarily know if that is going to be it, but that's what they're saying on there. Next one, number two is Copper Comme des Garçons. Um, I don't actually, I've not actually spent a lot of time to understand this particular house, so um, I really couldn't comment on it because I've not smelled this particular um, edition from Comme Garçon. But hey, they say number two, so yeah. I really don't know anything about it. So guys, let me know down in the comments. Have you checked out this one? Have you got one of these fragrances already from this house? Let me know your thoughts. Um, number three, Tiffany and Tiffany, um, love for him. I've actually smelled this and this is probably one of the weakest fragrances I've ever smelt. I think, to be honest guys, it's a fragrance that um, it's probably, even though it's for him, to be honest, it could have been a feminine fragrance. Um, it just leaves nothing to be desired. I think someone was trying to, you have the matchup of the two bottles that came out. So you got like Stronger for him and Stronger for um, her sort of, um, you know, couple sort of fragrances going on. I believe also that is the same here um, with this particular release because when I did smell it, it smelled so weak. Um, it just smelled slightly fresh. Um, I mean, even the notes are saying citric aromatic fragrance with a woody infusion, but it was just left so much to be desired. There was just nothing to take away. And I think sometimes you can be a little bit too precious with fragrances. And this is where people try and pass off skin scents to say, oh, this is a nice fragrance or because it's by a certain house, therefore it's worth the money. Um, I wouldn't recommend this fragrance. Um, it doesn't even last longer than 10 minutes when I sprayed it. But by all means, guys, let me know if you've had a chance to actually smell this one. Um, then, obviously, I've done a review on this one as well, Dodging a Banner um, K. Um, not particularly the biggest fan of it, I must say. It's not really something that's um, on my list for another bottle. I did um, a review of this one when I was in um, Poland. And I was in Warsaw and I did a review with a lady called Shanka. And, and you can look down in the videos, I'm sure you can see. Um, my review of that at the time which was literally just when it came out and um, it's a pleasant fragrance it's got a sort of grapefruit note in there going on slightly as you say blood orange but it's not necessarily something that i would expect knowing what's capable knowing what that particular house is capable of um i don't need to say it anymore you know we all know what this one is you know that's the that's one of the best fragrances ever released um and then this is it is just a so so fragrance uh leaves a lot to be desired um molten brown london fiery pink pepper i've really not smelled this to know i don't know how this is number five on the list but that's how it goes um and i guess i'm assuming now just seeing this list that this is actually a list of um the most recent releases at the time obviously that this has been um this has been uh, produced this particular article and also i do understand the way these um you know these particular um newspapers work or magazines work is that they do get sponsorship so they need to obviously place 
you know the actual fragrance or the item in you know one of their productions or one of their uh, publications that they put out so um yeah i've never smelled this one um fire pink pepper molten brown fragrances aren't bad if, if you're not they've got so many out there that if you're not really too sure what you want it pretty much is telling you what it's going to smell like so if you smell say for instance the um the shower gel for example a lot of fragrances smell very similar so it's not a bad thing it's not necessarily for someone who's probably really deep into fragrances maybe just like the house and you do know that you're going to get a bit of longevity with the with the uh shower gel so maybe that's something that you want to get into um specific cannabis or the parfum vaporizer spray i've never smelled this one in my life don't even know what this one is i don't even necessarily know the house um backstab of california pacific cannabis let's see the note breakdown um no actual cannabis is used um the oil um has been replicated by using other plants of lavender and sage, dry downs, patchouli, tonka bean, kind of sea salt note. Okay, fair enough. Um, guys, let me know if you tried it out. I won't be purchasing it, but let me know if you tried it out. I'm sure it might be something of interest if you like, maybe the sort of nautical voyage sort of vibe if it's going for a sort of sea salt note. Um, Gucci Memoir de Odeur. Um, I think for me, guys, this is not a bad fragrance. Um, it does smell a little bit, funny enough to me, there was the element of that ambroxin that I was picking up from when I smelt it, but it just felt too, it is a unisex fragrance. And I think because they're trying to be mass appealing, it's not a bad thing, but it's just not enough. It doesn't really go either way for me. From a masculine fragrance side of things, from my perspective, I would prefer slightly more of a masculine fragrance from Gucci, not necessarily this particular one. And they've chosen to go middle of the rose. Cool bottle, looks more retro, but as it, as it stands, it just doesn't really have any staying power for when I smelt it. Maybe you get away with it in the summer, in the summer months, um, but it's just not something that I believe, you know, beyond maybe using it for sport or something like that, it doesn't really serve any purpose. It has to be in the high heat, in my opinion, for it to really um, give me that fire and that flame to say I'm wearing a fragrance. It's a nice fragrance, it's a pleasant fragrance, but could I spend my 92 pounds on something else for 100 mil? I do believe probably I would do so. Um, Dior on, um, yeah, we've already spoken about this one. Real letdown, Ambroxin is, is like a key component on this new version, but the actual classic sort of woodsy lipstick vibe that you get from it, it's just totally gone. Um, and I don't understand the reason why, they, you know, sometimes there's a, a, a new spin on things, but it's just not necessary. And funny enough, when I spoke to one of the ladies in the perfume shops, when I went to go and actually try out this fragrance, and they actually said to me that some of the, um, I don't know which one specifically, but I believe they're taking it off the shelf, the actual original um, Dior Arm, um, they've actually taken it off the shelf. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but I understand that that's not actually officially available. You may be able to get it discounted because it's like X market product that they're trying to get rid of. But um, yeah, this new version is just a real letdown. I think they still do have the intense version though of the original type. So I would try and stick with the intense if possible. Um, Hugo Boss Absolute. Um, I've done the, um, the, I've had a bottle, I've got a bottle of the original um, the scent that came out and that was a very sort of heavy sort of leather note that was coming out in there for me um, So I wasn't a particular fan when I smelled this one. It does smell again. It's a lot darker It's a lot heavier. It's definitely for the winter autumn months. Um, I mean this is saying it's got a tangy sort of uh, rum sweetness to it um, I, I've not had enough time with that fragrance to know but I just know because of the original um, uh, The scent uh, it's okay. I've even got a bottle as I say got a bottle here I'll probably do a review on that at some point. But it's a bit dated now but it just wouldn't really, it didn't really flow for me. It didn't really flow for me. It wasn't, they call it the scent, but it wasn't for me. How that's number nine, I don't know. And again, number 10, um, Armani Privé. Um, again, I've not, this is way beyond what I would probably go and pick up as, or my, as my first choice. So guys, um, the Young, Young, Young Privé. I do not even know how to pronounce that, guys. So you let me know, guys. This one is saying that it has a, um, let's see what's got in there. China's your long mountains, tree, uh, tea leaves, black tea brings out the smoked almost woodsy facets, white tea, so okay, so it's a greeny type of tea smell, yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad, it won't be my first choice, definitely won't be my top 10, but yeah, that's the first top 10, and then we're getting this one, now this is a, it's marked towards women, and um, I have smelt it, it's been a long time, Tom Ford fragrances are very well composed in my opinion, it's probably one of the best houses to go for when you're looking for fragrances and um, definitely good quality um so you know i wouldn't i know the price can be a little bit steep if you're going to buy 100 mil um sort of uh, private blend stuff um but this is like you know it is i've not necessarily smelt this enough to even give my comments on it um i've only smelt it like very sort of 
passing through the airport, had a smell and just kept it moving. It, it didn't come to my mind. But it's one of those fragrances that I'm sure will last. Um, no, no doubt from Tom Ford what they're doing. Um, and I'm gonna stop it there. I mean, this is number 12. I mean, All Saints Leather Skies. I've smelled some freak. I've someone actually gave me some um, testers of All Saints fragrances, so I may do a quick um, review of those ones. This one, uh, I don't believe I've smelled though, um, so I cannot really comment on it. But again, this is all in the top 12. All in the top 12. So as a rundown goes, it's clear to me that this is more to do with probably marketing, which is not a bad thing, that's just how it goes. This is definitely to do with marketing. This isn't necessarily a top 10 for 2000 and um, it could be a top 10 for 2020, but again, that's what's currently on the market from their perspective. Um, it's not necessarily top 10 of all time or top 12 or top 80, but it is a fragrance guide. So I don't believe it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, um, maybe actually, let's see. No, I was trying to think if they've done it in, in like a sort of um, uh, alphabetical order, but that's not quite the case. Um, jumping all over the show here. But yeah, there we go, guys. So that is that is the top. Well, I mean, I don't even know if to say if it's the top 10 or top 5, top 12. It's just literally what they've said. This is the men's guide. So I think that's probably what's new on the market from um, GQ's perspective and also probably from the uh, publishing, you know, um, advertising perspective. Who knows? But it is what it is, guys. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Let me know, guys. Have you checked out any of these fragrances? Let me know. Have you also got in your top five any one of these fragrances that you can see on the list so far? Um, I certainly don't. I think the only one I could say um, potentially in my top 10, maybe, and it wouldn't even go into my top 10. I mean, is it the top 10 of all time or top 10 of 2020? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't even believe that this would fall in there, to be honest. So, um, yeah let, let me know guys have a look at this let me know i'll put the link down below in respect of this particular um uh website let me know your thoughts if you've got anything you want to say about it have you tried any of these fragrances obviously this particular one here i'm sure you've had a, a, a sniff off and you may or may well not be um, particularly happy with it but this one for instance i've not really heard much talk about it a few people did reviews but this seems to be some of these boss fragrances recently seem to be more come and go fragrances they don't really seem to stay around um compared to you know, the original boss bottle that came out back in the day and obviously since then things don't really seem to have developed in the same way some nice fragrances don't get me wrong but i just don't believe they're enough to make me in my particular view make me think well this is the fragrance i definitely need to get um moving forward i smell them they're nice but they don't necessarily stand out when you've got so many other fragrances but anyway guys thank you very much for the comments likes and subscriptions i do very much appreciate your comments and again it's very important that again we help the channel grow so please do me a big favor if you can do not forget to give this a thumbs up and also do not forget to subscribe to the channel i have so many people that seem to be looking at the channel but a lot of them are not subscribed it's saying like over 70 percent of people look are not subscribed so please guys help me help you and subsequently i see some a lot of people come from the usa looking at the channel so thank you very much guys in the states do appreciate it a lot of people in the uk obviously uh, and then also in um, parts of, of, of Mexico, parts of Germany, you know, so I really do appreciate Para la gente que habla español, muchas gracias para uh, tus saludos Y también, ojalá vamos a hablar más uh, en español sobre una, una cosa, pero no sé cuándo, pero sí Sobre un perfume, pero no sé cuándo voy a hacerlo, pero ojalá voy a hacerlo este mes, ok? See you guys soon, thank you very much, and do not forget to like and subscribe, ciao